I'm the professor of jazz composition and arranging here at UNT. Basically, my function is to take jazz musicians who are interested in composing music and teaching them how to uh, evolve from that level and uh, also to do what we call arranging, which is essentially taking compositional ideas and bringing them into various ensembles. I moved here from New York and uh, I've been here since 2010. And this is a great school. It's got a great jazz program, certainly, but it's also got an excellent classical program. And I've taken full advantage of that with my students. They, they uh, tap into both sides of the school. And that's what makes it such a unique place. One of the great things about working here is dealing with such excellent students. And um, a lot of them have been award winners. Downbeat Magazine, which is a very prestigious publication in jazz. BMI, which is Broadcast Music Incorporated for uh, composers. ASCAP, certainly. Um, there's another organization called JEN, Jazz Education Network, which has offered scholarships and uh, awards to uh, outstanding writers. And awards within the school. The Presser Scholarship, the Sherman Barsanti Award, I'm very proud of a lot of my students. They've done, done great for themselves and worked hard and they deserve the accolades that they receive. What brings students to UNT is the incredible comprehensive education I think that they can get here. Um, all of my students, the graduate students in particular, when they do recitals, they're not only writing for jazz band and various combinations of small groups, they're writing for orchestral musicians they're learning how to write vocal music. They're learning how to do MIDI production. And my general uh, quest, I guess, for them is to learn how to become full-fledged professionals to function in a diverse way so that they're ready for this world as a, as a business and as, uh, to capitalize on opportunities that they may not even foresee. And I can do that here at UNT because of the quality of the classical program, because of the quality of the vocal program, because of the quality of the jazz program, and the quality uh, just of the, the students, the attitude that they bring into the program, this wonderful enthusiasm. They're not asking how much does it pay. It's like, what do you need? And I want to be there. In the jazz faculty, I knew at least a third of them by the, when I came here. And that was because some of them were previously in New York. They were not from New York as I was. I was born in Long Island, so I grew up in New York. But um, the, in jazz especially, you know, they say New York City, that's a real jazz town, and, and that's true. And the kind of experience that you can get in New York City, that field experience is uh, almost unmatched anywhere else. So I feel particularly, um, grateful that I happen to be born in that environment and succeeded professionally in that environment so that now I can share that level of street experience, field experience that transcends the curriculum. It's not something that you can buy, that field experience. And so I think what makes our faculty uh, particularly effective is that we not only have the field experience, but that we're also dedicated teachers that we are here and that we know how to teach. To be a teacher, to be a professional teacher is just as much of an accomplished skill as to be a professional performer. And when uh, a teacher can bring both things to a student, I think that's when potentially the student can really flourish. I wanna teach my students how to become good people and to be, have a responsible professional attitude because as one of my good friends from New York says, even if you're one in a million in New York, there are eight others like you. I'm not worried about your ultimate career path. I'm worried about your first five years out of school. That's my job to get, help you get traction so that in five years, you will have established yourself as a composer and arranger that people know about who are asking you to produce projects so that you can earn income and say, I make a living as a composer or an arranger. I want them to find themselves as artists and, and they bring things in that they want to do. 
But on the other side of that, I'm saying, I'm gonna have you do things that are what I call on-demand writing. Because that's the stuff that, you know, nobody's gonna pay you to write your own stuff. It's like, hey, I need this piece of music in this style, in this time frame. Can you do it? And if you wanna make a living, you say, yes. And if you wanna be good at it and have the person who's hiring you say, man, I loved what you did, then that means you need to be, have a lot of discipline and you know, skills. And I, I calibrate my teaching in accordance with the students I'm teaching and those courses. And so that real world experience is what we impart here at UNT to bring our students or prepare them as much as we can for their, the launching of their careers. Jim Scott, who was the dean of our College of Music for almost 15 years, during uh, the last year, he called me into his office and he said, you know, we're doing, the, the school has its 125th anniversary coming up. I'd like to commission you to write an original piece to celebrate the 125th anniversary. And then we talked about some parameters, some general parameters. The first thing was that the piece had to be between 10 and 15 minutes long. The second thing was that it was going to be premiered during the Wingspan Week, which is this week. So uh, the other parameter was uh, tapping into both sides of the school, orchestral musicians and jazz musicians meeting together, playing the same piece on the same stage. It's what, um, I mean, I think there are a handful of schools that could maybe do that and are doing it, but we're one of those schools. We can do it and we should because we can and because it's artistically important, especially for 21st century musicians. And then the other, the final thing that Jim Scott and I discussed was the aspect of giving this piece greater life, a life beyond UNT. He suggested that the piece could work for future orchestras professional orchestras, not necessarily future UNT orchestras, although we could do that as well. And so, uh, sweet for an anniversary, just felt it sounds nice, and I think it says more or less what, what the piece is about, and hopefully future orchestras might consider it once they hear the piece and say, hey, you know what, we have an anniversary coming up. Whoever uses it, it will still reflect on, on our school. People will say, this is the piece that was created at UNT for UNT. And so our name will live on, hopefully through, through other uh, organizations.